Hi everyone, I'm Jeevana Hegde, a customer engineer at Google Cloud. And welcome back to the Technical Guide for Startups, where we are helping startups for technical enablement to start, build and grow their businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In our previous video, we introduced you to the series. And now we're on to the second episode, which is all about getting started on Google Cloud. In this video, we are going to be covering how to create a Google Cloud account so you get started on the Google Cloud platform, get a brief overview of the resource hierarchy, understand why an organization is important and how to create one, how to create a folder, how to create a project, and do an entire run through of the Google Cloud console so we get the fundamentals in place. And finally, we will be going over identity and access management for building your security fundamentals and wrap up with some actionable next steps. So without any further ado, let's get on to exploring the Google Cloud Platform together. Before jumping onto the demonstration, there's something you need to keep in mind. Once you create your account, you actually need to activate it in order to use it. And for this, you'll be required to put in your payment details. By default, you're provided with $300 of credits. And this is more than sufficient in case you're just planning to experiment or practice for a certification. Once those credits are over, you will have to manually upgrade to a payment tier to continue working. So don't worry, as you are not auto-charged once your trial expires. But in any case, it's always good to know that you have to deallocate, delete, and stop the resources that you do not require. Now let's go over the absolute fundamental step which is creating your Google Cloud account. To start off, I've opened an incognito window which makes it convenient in case you're working with different accounts and then open up the console.cloud.google.com. Now, we either create a new account or we can simply sign into an existing one. If you have it, just put in your credentials and login. Now, here let's go over how to create a new one. Click on create account and choose for myself or my business, but know that the steps are pretty much the same in any case. Fill in the details like the name, email address, create a new one if you have to, and also set a strong password. Once you're done, click on next. You're then asked to fill in a phone number and a verification code is sent to it. So put in this code when prompted. Once you have all of that verified, your Google Cloud platform opens up, but with a pop-up. All you have left to do is select your country now and agree to the terms of service. Click on the checkbox and click on agree and continue. Congratulations. Now you have yourself your Google Cloud account. But, like I already mentioned, you now need to activate it. So let's go ahead and do that. This is a three-step method. Select your country and tell us what describes your organization the best. I'd probably go ahead here and say Startup and click on Continue. And when you do, you are asked to verify the phone number that you wanted to be contacted in in case of any support issues, etc. And then go to the final step. And finally, all you have to do is confirm your account type Fill in your business name, fill in your payment method and your card details, etc. and understand all the information in detail. And all you have to do is click on start my free trial. Now that we've begun our journey by creating an account, let's go over understanding what a resource hierarchy on Google Cloud is. A resource hierarchy helps us understand how your resources are going to be organized, which is extremely crucial when your organization is scaling out and is a great foundation to understanding inheritance of access control and organization policies for your resources. To the bottom most of the hierarchy, we have all our resources, which are essentially all the products and services like your compute engine instances, machine learning APIs, databases, and everything else. This is where your application really stands. Resources can only be parented by projects, and this becomes the first grouping mechanism in your Google Cloud resource hierarchy. You need to have at least one project to get started with building your resources. It is a best practice that you segregate your projects based on your environment, such as development, test, and production. This way, the flow is kept clean, easy to manage, debug, and scale. Right above projects, we have folders. These folders can contain other projects as well as folders. This provides an additional grouping mechanism to help keep your resources and accesses restricted, maybe department-wise, team-wise, and so on. Maybe you wouldn't want your research team's resources to be accessed by the other departments, so you can keep them isolated, yet under one roof. And that one roof is an organization. This is the umbrella for your entire company and acts as the root node. 
It is a prerequisite for you to have an organization in order to use folders. Now that we have a broader understanding of the entire resource hierarchy, let's try and understand an organization in a little more detail and why it's so important. Organizations provide central visibility and control over every resource that belongs to that organization. The IAM access control policies applied to an organization apply throughout the hierarchy to all the resources. It is not required or mandatory to have an organization, but some features of a resource manager will not be usable without one. If you are a Google Workspace or a Cloud Identity user, when you create a Google Cloud project, an organization is automatically provisioned. Now, without any further ado, let's jump onto the demo. I'm doing so by creating a Cloud Identity account. The link to this is in the description box below. Now, click on Next. Put in your business name and select the number of employees present in your company. I'm picking um, 100 to 299 for the purpose of this demo and then click on next. Select your business location and business phone number. Moving on, provide your current email address. I'm just going to go ahead and type in a mock email address here. And then add in your business's domain name address. Once you've added this, you're asked to verify it and confirm, just to be sure. Once you confirm it, the next step is to put in the account administrator's full name. You can change who you give this role to even once it's created. So know that you don't necessarily have to be the permanent one in charge, even though you're creating it right now. Anyway, very quickly moving on to the next step, it's for you to pick a username and a very strong password for your cloud identity account. And then click on next. The last few steps would be for you to choose whether or not you want to educate your users regarding workspace apps, new features, etc. I'm just going to say no thank you for now and move on. The final step is simply for you to confirm that you're not a robot and then click on agree and create account. Congratulations! Now you have yourself a cloud identity account which also means you have an organization for you to get started with. Now that we have an organization, we can create a folder. So let's go ahead and try that. Click here and you can see which organization is open. Now click on these three dots and select manage resources. This takes you to where you can see your hierarchy very clearly. But remember, you need the right access controls in the first place to be able to view all of this. And we'll come to that in just a bit. Now let's create our folder. I'm going to quickly give it a name. Let me call it demo dash startups dash jeevnal. So maybe all my demos are going to be present under this folder. And now I can browse where I want to be creating this folder. Let me directly say this is going to be under the organization and then click on create. Now we just wait a couple of seconds and when we have the refresh notification pop up here, we simply refresh the screen and that's it, we have our folder here. Now quickly from where we left off, let's create a project because otherwise you can't really provision any resources. Let's try to create this and see what happens. Click on create project to create a new one. As you can see, it's already given me a name and a project ID. The project ID needs to be a globally unique one, and it's not necessary for the project name and ID to match, but it's a best practice to do so, as it's just easier to fetch in the future, and the project ID cannot be changed once it's created. Let me just try and type in a unique name here, maybe technical guide demos. So if I remove the demos from this, you can see it adds in new variables automatically for the project ID to make it globally unique. But let's leave it at technical guide demos and then browse the location where you want to create this project. Let's create this under the folder which we had created earlier and then click on create. Oh, wait a minute, do we see an error here? Well, that was expected and that's because I don't have the right permissions yet to be able to create this project. You need the resource manager project's create permission to be able to do so. And this permission is included in the project create role. So let's quickly head on to IAM and provision that. We'll see IAM in a little more detail in just a couple of minutes. When you come here, you can already see the permissions available for a couple of users. Let's just try and add a new role and provision it to myself. Luckily, I have the permission to give myself the permission to be able to do so. If not, someone else would have to do it for me. Anyway, I'm selecting Project Creator here and saving it. Now you can see that I have the permission that I need, so let's just go back and create the project. 
There are a bunch of ways where you can go and land in the same creating the new project page. So maybe going here and clicking on new project or going back and doing what we did before through the manage resources page. I'm just going to go ahead and give it this name, press the location and now click on create. This alarm bell here will give us a notification when the project is ready and notifications throughout. There shouldn't be any error now, so let's just wait. Now let me quickly refresh the page and expand the folder. And here you go, your project has now been created. It's that easy. Now that we have a project to work with, let's get a broad understanding of the Google Cloud Platform Console. Always important to keep in mind that you need the required permissions to access any resource via the console or the command line interface. I'm selecting a project and your landing page is your dashboard. The dashboard gives you an overview of your project some project information, resources you probably have provisioned, monitoring details, billing details, etc. You can also customize what you see on your dashboard by clicking on the customize option. Let's say I don't want the project details and monitoring details to show up. So I'm just going to switch the toggle buttons and click on done. And as you can see, it's gone. The next basic feature is to the top left corner here. It opens up the navigation menu. It has all the products and resources that you can provision. And for convenience, it's segregated based on different categories, such as compute, serverless, storage, databases, and more. An additional feature which comes in handy is to pin the resources that you use frequently. You can further unpin it by clicking on the same icon. Another feature is if you're in another product page, all you have to do is click on home to get back to your dashboard. Click on this to view the organization name you're working in. You have a list of recent projects you're working on here. You can also start a couple of important projects. So let's say I start the other project and you can see them on the start tab. To view all the projects and folders, click on all. You can further expand or deflate them. Now, if I want to switch between two projects, all I have to do is select the new project I want to work with and it's really that simple to switch. The three dots on top here will take you to these respective pages and the new project, as you've already seen, is to create a new project. Right next to that, we have the search bar, which is an easy way to find anything on the Google Cloud Platform. Moving back, this icon can be used to activate your Cloud Shell terminal. This way, you can type in your commands instead of clicking your way through resources. You can also click on Open Editor to get a full page terminal. Coming back, clicking on this question mark here will act as the help tool by guiding you to a couple of resources. The bell icon like we discussed earlier is to view your notifications. You can go through the project settings and different utilities by clicking here. Click on the extreme right top corner to manage the account with which you're logging in. So you can add an account or sign out here. For starters, this should help. The more you work on the platform, the more you familiarize yourself with it. So get started without any delay. It's important to understand three sections when we talk about identity and access managements, or IEMs on Google Cloud. The who, does what, and on what. The who is essentially the identity part of the IEMs. The who talks about whether it's a single user multiple users separately or multiple users together. Multiple users together is what is referred to as a group and this is what is recommended. The does what is the access or set of access controls the user has on a particular set of resource or so. For example, something like an admin role would allow you to create, modify, delete, add other roles, etc. Whereas a viewer role for a resource would only allow you to read from it and not modify or delete it. And finally, we have the on what, which talks about which resource these obligations are put on. So let's say a user has only been granted access to a particular Cloud SQL database. This does not allow the user to access anything apart from this particular Cloud SQL database. Here's an example to understand it as a whole. There are a group of users who are granted the access of Cloud SQL viewer role, and this grants them access to the Cloud SQL. Here are some best practices regarding IAMs. Leverage and understand the resource hierarchy. Use projects to group resources that share the same trust boundary. 
check the policy granted on each resource and make sure you understand the inheritance. Use the principle of least privilege, which means don't over-provision any of the permissions that a user does not require. Grant roles to Google Groups rather than individuals. This way, when new members are added, they don't have to be permitted all of those permissions again. They just need to simply be added to the group. And finally, use predefined roles whenever possible, as opposed to basic roles, which gives us way too much access, and customized roles where you need to pick and choose from a particular set of permissions, which can be hard to maintain. Let's go over a very short demonstration for IAM. Let's head to the console, click on IAM and admin, which has also been pinned here, and make sure you're in IAM. This is the IAM dashboard where you can see a bunch of different permissions that have already been assigned. I can add a new role by either editing here, by adding a new role, or I can go ahead and click on add here. As I want to add it for the same member, which is myself, I'm just going to go ahead and edit here and add a new role. Let's say BigQuery viewer. As you can see, this has come up, which means now I can access and view the data from BigQuery. Now I can go ahead and delete this. And as you can see, it's gone. What next? A couple of resources have been added in the description box below for you to check out, for you to get more details on these concepts. And that brings us to the end of this video, where we went over creating a new Google Cloud account, did an overview of the resource hierarchy, we learned how to create an organization, a folder, and a project. We did an entire run through of the Google Cloud Console. We understood in brief what IAM is and wrapped it up with a quick demo for IAM. In the next episode, you'll learn about serverless application deployment and be introduced to App Engine, Cloud Run, and Cloud Functions. There'll be a section where we deep dive into Cloud Run and look at performance and cost optimization. We'll also run you through a sample e-commerce application architecture so you know what a general architecture looks like and wrap it up with a customer success story as to how it's actually benefited a Google Cloud customer. Stay tuned for all the exciting content that we have for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell icon to get notified every time a video has been posted. And we will see you very, very soon in our next video.